Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, I want to take a good look at the Viking Berserk. In the November 2021 patch, they were significantly buffed as part of a shift for Vikings toward being more of an infantry-focused civilization. Just to refresh your memory, or if you were unaware, the Vikings HP bonus that has always been staggered since the days of Age of Kings was recently changed now to a straight plus 20% HP, starting in Feudal. The Berserk itself also gained 3 attack, 1 melee armor, a cheaper elite upgrade, and now train a bit faster than before. This is on top of the Forgotten Empire's expansion, giving Vikings chieftains to raise their attack against cavalry, free tracking being in the game now, and the addition of the arson tech. Like long swordsmen and infantry in general, berserks have been getting incremental improvements, but the November patch really kicked it up a notch. For this video, I want to look into where the unit was before, and also where it stands now. We'll start things off in the Castle Age. At a glance, you can see the stats before and after the recent changes, with noticeably more attack, HP, and the new melee armor. I'll also throw in a Viking Long Swordsman as a baseline for comparison, though note that since we're talking about Vikings, it has 12 more HP than usual. In terms of cost, the Berserk is a little more than the standard Swordsman line, and keep in mind it also can't be reduced by supplies. As for their hidden bonuses, Berserks deal an extra 2 damage against Eagle Warriors and buildings, whereas the Long Swordsman instead has 6 and 3 against those things respectively, helping to make up for its lower base attack. Now one large difference between the two units is in their training time. Berserks of course need castles, which are a bigger investment than barracks, but are actually trained 50% faster than swordsmen. They also move 17% faster, which is important for raiding and being able to pick your engagements. Traditionally, this in particular has been seen as a major advantage for the Berserk over the generic swordsman line. Their other major advantage is of course their ability to heal. Berserks restore 1 HP every 3 seconds, or 20 HP per minute, even while in combat. For context, against light cavalry, that means they heal 3 HP during a fight, 5 HP in a one-on-one -on -one battle with a knight, and about 10 HP if being attacked by a single crossbowman. Obviously, the longer the fight lasts, the more impact it has, but in most cases we're looking at maybe allowing a berserk to survive one extra attack that it otherwise wouldn't be able to. I think more important is the ability to heal between fights. Three minutes after a fight ends, you can be sure that all of your surviving berserks are back to full strength, giving the unit the potential for a lot of long-term value. To put that through a resource collection lens, a berserk healing is equivalent to gathering 20 food and about 8 gold per minute. You'd be in the right ballpark to say that for every berserk you have healing at a given moment, you're gaining about as much value as temporarily adding an extra villager to your economy. The logic being that healing a berserk from 1 HP back to full health ends up being pretty similar to a villager gathering food and gold for the same 3 minutes, and then paying for a fresh unit. Admittedly, it's an odd way to frame it, but I like to think of healing as a combination of an economic advantage as much as a military one. So now let's switch and see how they perform head to head in a few key matchups, and hopefully get a sense of what you can expect from them, especially compared to a Viking Long Swordsman. First off, head to head, while Viking Long Swordsmen have more HP, the combination of higher attack and regeneration means that Berserks win fairly comfortably, with around a third of their HP left. Of course, Berserks are more expensive to begin with, and Long Swordsmen can also pick up supplies if you're going to be investing a lot into them, and reduce their food costs by 15. If we account for their lower cost after supplies, Long Swordsmen can actually take the fight, though note this assumes you're able to actually leverage their cheaper cost and do proportionally more units. Of course, this isn't accounting for the Berserk's extra speed and healing between battles though, which is part of what you end up paying a premium for. But now let's see how they do against the Knight, which is of course the most common melee unit that they're likely to run into. This is slightly complicated by the unique tech Chieftains, which gives Viking infantry, including the Berserk, plus 5 attack against cavalry and plus 4 against camels. It's a pretty expensive tech at 700 food and 500 gold, so it's a big investment and not necessarily an automatic pickup. With their previous stats restored to before the November patch, reducing their attack, HP, and armor to what they were for years, knights with bloodlines actually have the upper hand with equal resources. At least without chieftains, it was a losing fight to take on knights previously with berserks, even accounting for the cost difference between the units. It wasn't even particularly close, with the knights having a little under half their total HP left. Switching now to the current balance post-November patch, with equal resources and upgrades against knights, berserks now seem to have a small to medium advantage. Again, this is assuming you're actually able to field proportionally more units, but I think it shows how significant the higher attack and melee armor can be. If we add that in, the advantage becomes immediately very obvious. Chieftains is actually a bit of a sneaky tech as well, since it isn't advertised on the unit in any way. 
your opponent actually has no idea by looking at or even clicking on your units if it's been researched or not. Something that surprised me is after chieftains with equal blacksmith upgrades, a berserk can almost take on a knight one on one, which needless to say is great value considering the knight costs 50% more resources overall. Chieftains may be an expensive tech, but if a player is massing knights, it can pay off in a big way. Also, when it comes to pikemen, despite being a bit cheaper and accounting for that, even with the viking HP bonus, berserks are much better in that matchup. Especially after the chieftain's tech to help against light cavalry, berserks end up being a very well-rounded anti-trash unit. Switching now to eagles, long swordsmen of course have more HP and a plus 6 bonus against them, while berserks have just plus 2. But once you factor in the berserks higher attack and regeneration, the two units end up being almost identical in effectiveness. The Berserk can even heal up afterward and moves a bit faster, so there's an argument it's the better counter, but really either one is a great choice against Eagles. Thinking now about crossbows, on paper a Berserk should take 17 hits to the Long Swordsman's 18, if all of the shots are fired at once, but with only one crossbowman a Berserk can heal fast enough to change that number to 20. Remember, the Viking Long Swordsman actually has pretty decent HP with their bonus factored in, so it ends up doing a bit better than you'd probably expect. Even though Berserks are pretty fast for infantry and can also heal, I still think Mass Crossbows are one of the best Castle Age counters. The same cannot be said though for the Skirmisher. Again, on paper it should be 33 hits for a Berserk and 36 for Long Swordsman, but in this case healing plays a much larger potential role. A Berserk attacked by one Skirmisher ends up taking around twice as many shots as expected, as essentially a single Elite Skirmisher is doing 40 damage per minute, while the Berserk is healing 20. With enough focus firing this isn't going to be an issue, but some smaller version of this will be happening in practice, and shows again that the Berserk is really an amazing anti-trash unit. Arguably though, their largest standout role is when it comes to raiding. Not only are they quite fast for infantry, but of course have high enough attack to pick off villagers quickly, on top of healing and a decent bonus against buildings. So far we've been looking exclusively at Castle Age, but I'd argue a lot of this applies fairly well to early Imperial. For the sake of thoroughness though, let's now switch and look specifically at Imperial Age, and how much Berserks can be improved when fully upgraded. To be clear, nothing about the Elite Berserks combat stats has been changed in the last patch, but here's the improvement over the non-Elite version with the Champion as a benchmark. Because the non-elite berserk was improved, the elite upgrade is technically now giving you less. So as compensation, it's had its cost decreased about 15% to 1,075 food and 475 gold. They're sort of weird numbers, but they are what they are. At first glance, it appears to be cheaper and much faster than teching into champion, considering champion requires four separate upgrades. Though, as we'll see in a moment, that may not be the full story. Side by side, you can see elite berserks have more attack and armor, but 10 less HP, so it's not completely obvious which is the better choice statistically, especially with the champion's lower cost. Of course, again this doesn't capture the faster movement and HP regeneration. But speaking of that regeneration, vikings also have their imperial age unique tech at the castle berserker gang, which doubles their base healing rate from 20 to 40 HP per minute. It's quite an expensive tech though, and when you add it to the elite upgrade cost, it makes the Berserk now look like a more expensive transition than Champion. For the sake of testing their ceiling though, we'll see what elite Berserks have to offer, assuming you're able to actually afford all of their upgrades. First off, against Champions with balanced resources, much like Castle Age, it's a clear win for the Swordsman line. Part of the story here is we're using Viking Champions, as that's your alternative, but even generic Champions with supplies will end up trading well. Again, in the long run, it's hard to beat the Swordsman value in any sort of melee situation. That said, one-on-one -on -one an Elite Berserk wins, so they're at least giving greater population efficiency in melee. Comparing how they both do against Eagles, Champions are maybe slightly better and certainly have more bonus damage, but similar to Castle Age, I would say both hold up fairly well, and you're not going wrong with either unit. Something I think is easy to underestimate about the Elite Berserk though is how good they are against Cavalry. Cavalier are a much more expensive unit, and you might expect them to trade pretty evenly with the Elite Berserk, but testing it out, the Cavalier just melt away, with the Berserks ending up with around half of their army left if we start with equal resources. Even against Frank Paladins, while they don't win with equal numbers, with balanced resources, Berserks actually come out on top. Assuming you're keeping up with upgrades, I don't think it's overstating things to say Berserks can hold their own against even top tier heavy cavalry. To hammer that anti-cavalry point home, here with 8 elite berserks against 9 hazars, only one berserk goes down. Even if you're highly valuing gold, the fact you can heal after a fight means you can probably get away with this kind of exchange in the long run if you play it right. Things get even crazier though against elite skirmishers. 
Theoretically, if they were hit with all of them at once, Elite Berserk should take 37 javelins, compared to the champion taking 42. The period of time that Berserks take the javelins, though, is important. After Berserker Gang, Elite Berserks heal fast enough to never lose HP against a single skirmisher. Here, after 3 minutes of straight skirmisher fire, he's still at full health. I wish there was a mod where arrows and javelins would stay stuck in units when they land, and we could just watch the unit turn into a pincushion. Even just how it is, though, makes for a great screensaver. On the other hand, the Arbalester does have enough attack to actually do alright against Berserks, and can overwhelm their healing. In fact, along with hand cannons, I'd say Arbalester is probably one of the best counters to Berserks. Despite that weakness to ranged units, though, I still think they're an excellent raiding unit in Imperial Age. While they don't necessarily hold up better against Town Center arrows and defensive buildings than regular champions, and have many of the same weaknesses to anti-infantry, the fact they're more mobile and can heal between fights makes them the clear choice when raiding. So to put it all together, I'd say there were a couple of common themes that jumped out to me throughout all of this. The first is the Berserk is an amazing anti-trash unit. They beat the Spearline through raw stats, they have the Chieftain's tech allowing them to take fights against not just light, but even heavy cavalry, and skirmishers are also hopeless against them in the late game. Given their relatively low gold cost, it's also not difficult to pair them with another gold unit, like the Arbalester, to add a great damage sponge in front. It's difficult to highlight in this sort of analysis, but their speed is also a major asset. The fact they can outrun defending units while raiding or escape a bad fight and heal up gives a lot of flexibility in how you use them. That all said, their big downside is still their cost. Not so much on a per unit basis, but in picking up their expensive unique upgrades to unlock their full potential. Hopefully though, this gave some ideas of what you can expect from the unit in some different situations, and help you out in your next Viking game. Big thanks to Jean-Paul, Justin, Kyle, James, Brian, Yaos, Samantha, I Like Toes at Night, and everyone on Patreon for their amazing support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.